A warm welcome to this presentation about 30 years of experience in the first experimental passive house built in 1991. So this is a often seen uh, view from the southern side, but uh, uh, this building has a huge glass space on the north side also, and this is a very early picture of that after completion of the building. And this is after 30 years, so you see the colors are a little bit changed, but it's uh, still uh, almost uh, looking in the same way. Uh, a, a picture from the inside. Uh, so this is our kitchen. And in, uh, in the next slide, you see a, a view from the dining room on the left hand side and uh, in the staircase, which uh, was a special design of the architects are quite proud of uh, to have that in uh, such a small space. Uh, you can also have a different floor plan. Uh, this is a, a four unit multifamily home. So um, uh, this is uh, another uh, of the occupants who has an open uh, floor plan with the kitchen in the center and the living room in the back. And in the next slide, you will see uh, the um, floor on the top of a building. Uh, me sitting there in my study, where I'm sitting right now. And there's also a huge guest room, uh, room there in the upper, in the upper floor. Um, now, uh, 30 years ago, uh, it was looking quite a bit different. On the left-hand side, you see it's an ordinary masonry building. Uh, built uh, like it's often been done in Central Europe uh, and it was well insulated, we have uh, good windows and on the right hand side you see how it's looking right now. A lot of plants uh, have been growing, we have wine on the southern uh, facade. Um, well after 25 years it was time to have a look whether everything is working as intended still and uh, so we, we have been looking especially for those components uh, which make up the better energy performance, uh, like the insulation, which has to be, of course, free of thermal bridges and airtight, the passive house windows, and the heat recovery system. Let's first have a look at the measured energy consumption, and, and that's the important thing. We reduce the energy consumption for heating by a factor of more than 10. So the overall consumption measured in the building in an average of uh, several years is less than nine kilowatt hours per square meter a year. And we will see a little bit later why that is so important. Well, how is that done? It's done by better insulation of the building envelope mainly. So uh, this is a, these are two pictures from uh, the building side of the two layers of insulation that have been installed there. So we had a chance to uh, check on the performance on these components. Uh, so there was a monitoring program still ongoing um, where we have looked into the temperature development in the parts of that wall and we can compare that with the calculations with the simulation program. So this is an ongoing uh, research uh, done in a project with the International Energy Agency. And so far we can see it's all working like intended. And even 30 years later, it's still working like intended. So uh, we cut a part of the wall out of it um, in um, a, 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 a way to take it to the laboratory. Um, uh, so there was a laboratory uh, sample uh, that is the hole left in the insulation, which of course we repaired later on. Uh, and this is the part we took and uh, took it to the laboratory. And my colleague, Professor Saxa, has a look into um, the performance of that material, the heat conductivity, the density, um, the uh, uh, load resistance, and it's uh, still working in the same way uh, 25 years ago. So uh, this is a long lasting uh, component. Um, 
We also have a important element in the passive house. These are the improved glazings. The glazings are triple glazed. And so the uh, question was whether after 25 years, they still perform as intended. So we did some field measurement with a guarded heat flow meter uh, to look for the U value of these glazings, which uh, turned out to be in a range of 0.8 watts per square meter Kelvin, which is only a little bit higher than the values at the beginning of the period. Uh, just to confirm that uh, the uh, thermal bridge reduction is still working, which is not coming with a surprise. You see in this uh, uh, thermal image, an infrared image from the eastern facade, uh, you can see the window, you can see the uh, air exhaust, which has a little bit higher temperature, and uh, you can see that uh, it's it's still um, free of thermal bridges, the whole uh, uh, thermal envelope. <laughs> what had to be checked also is the air tightness. Uh, so you see here my colleague, uh, uh, Sören Peber, uh, uh, doing a blower door test after 25 years, which uh, showed that the air tightness of the building is uh, still like it was in 1991, uh, within the error bounds of the blower door measurement. It's a uh, 0.2 air change per hour, quite airtight uh, building. And the first blower door you see here was done um, in uh, uh, still uh, during the construction phase. Um, and it's quite nice to see these old pictures from the uh, construction of the building right here. So still uh, 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 0.2 uh, air changes per hour, but well, of course you need fresh air. So how do we provide fresh air in these um, uh, passive houses? Well, it's uh, fresh air uh, by a supply air uh, system, uh, which has a very good filter inside. Uh, these filters, uh, they filter nanoparticles, so um, uh, also viruses uh, and uh, everything you see on the left hand side, how all the dirt uh, is kept in the filter and uh, we get really healthy air inside of the building. In order to not have a high energy loss, uh, this is done with a uh, heat exchanger. Uh, you see here a picture from early times in the building, the uh, heat exchanger used there, also the ventilators used, um, and uh, the system uh, as it was installed in the passive house. And uh, well, of course, uh, it's important to check uh, for the uh, clean ducts. Uh, what you see here is um, on the back side of the air filter, you see on the left hand side the air filter. Um, and uh, this is uh, a, a, the first beginning part of the duct system, which is still really clean. 25 years, that's a, a nice uh, uh, birthday. Uh, so the building uh, got a birthday present, and that was the installment of a photovoltaic system. So we photovoltaic system, uh, another part of it is on the roof, uh, can provide the electric energy needed uh, to run the building. And this is successful. Um, you see here that uh, we have a lot of excess uh, solar energy during uh, the summer. So it's easy to do everything during the summer with the electricity provided by the photovoltaic systems. But you can also see, of course, this is different during winter time. In winter time, it's hard uh, to even deliver the energy used for um, household um, appliances, which also save a lot of energy in our building, but uh, um, it's hard to do that. So we need other sources during winter, like wind energy, which has to be provided by the grid, and of course, also some energy storage. So that's the importance why we have to reduce the heating demand because this is the red part and the red part is of course concentrated during winter in that time where you need the extra investment for extra storage for extra uh, uh, renewable energy um, which uh, only has to be produced for this uh, uh, winter gap and if you imagine that uh, the uh, ordinary consumption of ordinary buildings 
for heating here is 10 times of what you see here. You see that the problem is and why the passive house gives us a good solution for that problem. What we have seen in these 30 years of experience in the passive house in darmstadt kranstein is that we have a optimal comfort condition in the building, that we have healthy indoor air, and that uh, we have reduced overall costs uh, because we save a lot of energy in this uh, uh, building. We have a solution uh, uh, to uh, protect the Earth's atmosphere, so uh, it's a possibility in the future for sustainable growth to build houses like that and to uh, retrofit existing buildings to passive house standards, especially to NRFIT. Um, we have a promotion of participation and understanding because everything uh, is easy to understand and uh, uh, we can participate in this development. A lot of small and, and, and medium enterprises. And the building is resilient and has a long durability. So after 30 years of experience, we see that this solution is a solution which can be applied uh, almost everywhere on uh, planet Earth. And uh, the experience uh, is so far uh, very encouraging. I want to thank you for your attention. <music>